I'd like to thank His Excellency the President and Cabinet for agreeing with the Ministers. I'd like to thank the Regional Speaker of Parliament. When I approached and I said, give me some little time to do some mobilization. So that when I bring this motion on the table, it is supported. This kind of motion is not easy. It's not a question of saying those in favor say aye, those against say nay. No. You need a half plus one minimum of a half plus one of all the members of parliament, not just being present, but saying yes. So it was not easy. I thank the speaker because the minute I went to her, I said, Madam Speaker, I'm ready. She immediately put me on the other paper and supported me and helped me to make sure that we did the mobilization. I'd like to thank my colleagues, the members of parliament, who approved this motion. And right in our midst, I'd like to attest and give thanks and tribute to my colleague, Honorable Alex Ormonde, for fighting, for spearheading this. What you are lucky, you have a visionary leader who is able to see what the people need, not just what they want, but what they need, even when they have not yet wanted. I've decided to say yes, we are free. That's why this morning I took time to visit those areas. I had another morning tour of the city. I wanted to see the area called Karako, just at the end almost at the foot hill. Um, and the others, up to Karan, and the other areas in the West Division. We, without that, we may have failed on the parameters of becoming a city. Unless you have a minimum of 300,000 people, and for Porto of itself, as it exists today, we would not have made this. I thank the leaders of those surrounding areas who are bringing to be part of this. Reason number one, I'm here to listen to you. I'm here to consult you. I'm here to hear your views on the proposed city. And I will sit and I will write a very good notebook. I will record, including those who are with us on Zoom. I want to hear what the people of Toro are saying about their city, our city. Secondly, I'm here to request for your support. Your support and sincere support that you speak with one voice so that this city has nothing to stop it to start on 1st July. I'm your minister. I'm the one to take these guidelines to parliament. I'm the one to seek the mandate of cabinet. And if I still think that we are not yet there, then we could actually remain. It is already created. Parliament has already created it. But you all know that we created 15 cities, and not all of them are starting this year. So if I'm advising that on ground we still are disunited, uncoordinated, and unsupportive of the city in a strategic manner on principles, then we can also say, let's wait for another year as we sort ourselves out. So I'm here to request the people of Fort Porto City to give this idea the full support that it deserves. More than anybody else, I have a stake here. This is where I pass on my way home. And sometimes when I'm tired, this is where I sleep. I want it to be a city. I have a stake. And I want to make sure that nothing stops it. So I'm here to request for your support. Thirdly, I'm here to give you the assurance of government. And as far as we're concerned, whether it's financing, whether it's the law, whether it's staffing, whether it's your boundaries, the city of Fort Porto is going to begin 1st July 2020. Since independence, Uganda has only had one city, Kampala, which is also the capital city of our country and the major commercial center. The city has its own law. It started under the Local Government Act, but today there is an act of parliament for Kampala capital city, the KCCA Act. The KCCA Act is for Kampala capital city authority. It 
it is not under that legal framework that we are going to operate these new cities. These cities are going to operate under the Local Governments Act. Of course, with time, we may want to propose a cities and urban authorities law separately. But for now, given three weeks to go, I can't venture in that direction. If you look at the Constitution, Article 5, Sub Article 4, Kampala Capital City Authority shall be administered by the central government. It is an authority under the central government. That is why there is a full-fledged ministry for Kampala with two ministers. And there is an executive director, ED, appointed by His Excellency the President. Kampala Capital City Authority does not fall under my mandate as a minister. Today, Kampala remains the key attraction and center of urbanization in Uganda. These new cities have something to aspire to. Kampala Capital City is the big brother, and we need to look at what they are doing. Hope they are good achievements, avoid their pitfalls or mistakes. Similarly, even in other towns in Uganda, the population has tremendously grown, calling for better services to the people. This has called for a change of status from a small town of Fort Port, the big municipality, and now the city status. You will agree with me, and it has been articulated by my district chairperson, the Honorable Wawinga, that for any country to achieve first a social economic transformation, there is need to manage the process of urbanization. It says that it is a growth center in the rural area. We declare it a town board and give it a town plan so that it can start in the process of physical planning. When it grows, it becomes a town council, and we gazette it as a town council. Then it grows because of population, the buildings, the industries, the institutions. That's a process you cannot stop. Your role as government is to manage that process and direct it properly. Uganda's urbanization for years has been unbalanced, especially in terms of regions, because Kampala has been in the center and the only city we have, leading to big rural urban migration from all other regions streaming into the central part of the country looking for opportunities. You leave your father's home to look for opportunities. And these opportunities, it's in the Bible, is it 99 of them out of 100 are away in the town looking for jobs? looking for city life, looking for, for innovation, for modernity. This trend is accountable for increased demand for employment, land, housing, better services, social amenities, infrastructure in Kampala, capital city. Overcrowding, narrow streets, pollution, and so, so it is my contention, and I want to believe I'm right, that there is need to drive the same urban agenda in other regions of Uganda for balanced development of the country. We need to have master development plans, streamline the development and to avoid resource wastage in the development process. This calls for preparation of these newly created cities. We have seven cities which are going to begin this year. They include Arua City, Gulu City, Mbale City, Jinja City, Mbarara City, Okoto City, and Masaka City. They stimulate development in their respective areas. We hope that they will help us to attract the people of Uganda to live in the western region, in Fort Porto, rather than being attracted to travel all the way to Kampala. Our intention as government is to build the city of Fort Porto, not by one 
but by action. We want a real change, a transformation in this area, but while avoiding the challenges we've seen in the capital city. What is our mandate? What do we have to do? First of all, we shall provide the necessary policy and legal framework. It is our responsibility to give the guidelines to follow. I now hear so many things. People are talking, this one will be the mayor, this one will be the councillor, this one will be the division headquarters. That is our mandate. Allow us to develop these guidelines and give them to you. Then you can know how to proceed. Enact, enact and create cities. A certain criteria, factors which we take into account, the will of the people. The will of the people is expressed through requests and resolutions of the council. There is no city, there is no municipality, there is no district that I will permit to go even beyond my level if I don't have a district council resolution. And I think even the chairperson of the district depends on the will expressed by the local, lower local governments below him. So he must be having minutes and resolution of the municipality. And the municipality should be having resolutions of the sub-counties. The efficacy of that, the importance of that, is expression of the will of the people. The people of Toro have told Uganda that we want, we think we have attained that level. Secondly, we look at the geography, the geographical features. We look at the roads, we look at the, the rivers, you look at the hills, you look at the population settlement, you look at uh, so many things. Even when you have made your recommendation and resolution as a council, I have the responsibility as the line minister to send a team of technical experts to come down and do assessment and analysis. And I have no doubt some of the cities are actually requested for three divisions or four divisions. But I knew because of finance, because of feasibility, because of the need to learn, and so on, I recommended the ministry recommended two divisions pass. I'm not going to say that, Majesty, but we told you in our council that we want three divisions. It is not the council that creates it. You guide me, you advise, you express the will of the people. But if it was to stop there, then the law would have empowered you to say, as long as the district council has resolved, that is the city created. That's not the way it goes. There are some we have created simply because they are regional headquarters. And within the law, we have already provided for a regional tier government. You look, for example, at Imbarana town. Look at, for example, Kulu town. Look at Imbale town. Look at Masaka. They are centers of those regions, uncontested. But when you look at Hoima, we're looking at the oil. We want to develop that area as a strategic oil city. You look at Nakasongor. I hear some of you are saying, but in one place there are no buildings, there are no industries. Go and visit Nakasongor, it's just a bush, the whole place. And we've decided for strategic reasons that, that will be a city. The future post-administrative capital of Uganda. As Kampala remains a commercial capital. I'm not going to say, but I just, why are you good for putting a city in that area? If you're maybe out. If you look at Fort Port, a decision was taken looking at the hills, the mountains, looking at the parks, Avere Ganyanamuiru, and everything around here, and the culture of this area to declare this a city for a strategic reason to develop a tourism city in Uganda here in Fort Port. From the lower local government, the sub county, the wards, to the vision from the division to the district, from the district to the ministry, from the ministry to cabinet, from cabinet, the authority which creates a city is parliament. Even me, don't ask me how, how we create it, what should I do? That decision is strategically taken by parliament. 
is the role of the government. You can't blame us and say, why are you creating more districts? I will bear that. <coughs> I'll explain why they recognize. I'll explain why. You can say, why are you creating so many municipalities? That one I'll explain. Don't ask the chairman or me. We must make sure that the Porto City is funded. Because the key, most important reason of creating cities is service delivery to the people. We are not looking for politics and where it should stand and who should represent where. We are looking for service delivery to the people, especially within the international global urban agenda. Therefore, it is our responsibility to work with the local authority so that we can mobilize their local revenue and we shall advise you and we shall lead you and guide you. Improve your local revenue. I have already the, the chairman, I think he has gone back, the chairman of Jinji, the mayor of Jinji. We use it digitalization of the revenue collection. We developed a database of the revenue points and we mapped them. Within two, three years, their revenue locally collected increased from 1.2 billion to 6 billion. I want to see the Porto City's local revenue muscle build and strengthen. But in addition, we shall give you some money as central government. That is our responsibility. As soon as the cities begin, I'm going to put in place a city's infrastructure development program. It is our responsibility to make sure that we open up the boundaries of this city, including the boundaries of the divisions. Provide the titles for the sea and ensure that there is no conflict with the surrounding local authorities. That one is a very quick expression here. I've seen you create a new district and right away there is conflict with the district, the mother district. Cities have different characteristics and peculiarities. There is, as I've said, an industrial area of the city. It is a city, a green city. I visited, I think it was one in China. Greenness, you see green everywhere. It's vegetation. I've been to New Zealand, and I was hosted in the city of Timaru. It's the city of livestock. And every day they produce 11 million liters of milk from their sheep and other livestock. Tin which is more agricultural, it poses a better future for a plan, a well physically planned and developed area of this. It could even be the attraction for high quality, first class residential areas. I, 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 don't, I don't understand anybody who is telling me that every division must be an industrial division. Who tells you that I must sleep near industries? Every division must have hotels. Who is telling you like that? And that is why maybe from the beginning, one of the things we are going to emphasize is fiscal planning. We're going to give you resources, we're going to bring the experts, they are going to map and physically plan for what we see. So that you agree on where the industry is supposed to be. You cannot put industries everywhere. So that we are pre even the churches. Where are they supposed to be located? We should bring the central business area. We should agree on the residential area of our city. It's already taken. So my answer to you, the people for the purpose, stop fear. Start your city. Give it time, give it leadership. You will see these areas you think are remote. You'll be surprised. Because they are very important, it will be too expensive. I have three weeks to make sure that this city begins. There is no child who starts running from day one. They start by falling down. And if you want to protect your child that he should never fall down, he may not be a good runner in this country. So let Fort Porto City begin. The challenges we are going to meet 
we shall resolve together. But next time we come, I don't sleep in a hotel. I cannot buy a plot in the city center here. I'm actually going behind there where I have seen. I've seen about three, four beautiful buildings. And I said I wish I could put mine there. It's the decision of government to get the cities and provide them boundaries. And let make sure that the Minister of Lands comes for Porto and opens up the boundaries of the city. So that tomorrow they are not fighting with Kavarori. We shall have actually even put the time. Number nine, it is the responsibility of government to provide safety and security of the city, its people, its properties, its assets, facilities, or our security forces. And we empower the local authorities to exercise a little more strength in terms of monitoring the security, reporting, information, intelligence. The need of government to ensure property management property sharing, property acquisition and disposal is properly done in an equitable manner. may not be important here, but in some places it is. Movable and immovable property. I've heard already some places. Because the municipality knows that come 1st of July, the municipality called for auto municipality will cease to exist. These are realities. And there will be a new authority called city. So the current municipality, I'm not saying this is what is happening here, but in some places, I see a rush to sell off properties, to mortgage land, to dispose of buildings, because they are now in the names of that municipality. And the district is because it has its properties here in the municipality. They know that they are going to leave and go to some other place. They are rushing either to get a title in their names or even to sell some of those properties. And some are even trying to deceive me. We've got an investor. There is an investor here. This land, you will put up a, a mall. These days I must have seen the debate between the mall and the arcade. We're going to put up a mall. And our headquarters will be a university. I'm telling the districts and the municipalities, go to I've told the PS today there should be a letter coming to you. And I can already tell you from yesterday, all sale, lease, exchange, or dispose of any physical property of the local government is totally stopped. In the whole country. Municipalities, please stop it. This rush to sell, to mortgage, to dispose of properties of government, please stop it. Just imagine if we had sold all the land, where would the new city of Porto now go? I, now, I need a new headquarter for the city. Beautiful headquarter. I want to develop a stadium big stadium in the city. I want to make sure that we have enough land for the roads. I want the recreation facilities for the people of Fort Now imagine if the people who came before us had sold all these buildings and land, where would we be today? So please, take it from me. We are going to guide you on the movable property. The vehicles, computers, the furniture, we shall guide you. But my particular attention today is all property. You are the mayor, you have a good pickup under your control because you believe that first July you are not going to be there, you run down this car. Really, let's be very mature. Let's do the right thing. So, we're going to talk about the government. You use the taxpayer money. And you are going to leave this property to the next leave. So I do not understand anybody telling me that the Porto municipality owns a property which they want to sell off before the city comes. Please stop it. It is all public property.
you manage people's expectations. People expect the new city to come with jobs immediately. People expect the new city to come with riches. People expect street lights everywhere by the end of this year. You must manage this expectation. Tell them, assure them, we shall reach there, but city development is the process. Secondly, it is your responsibility to sensitize the population. We must move with the people as we create a new, a new city. The city is not for us, we in leadership. This Uganda belongs to Ugandans. And wherever they are, even in the diaspora, they have a stake in Fort Porto City. So talk to them, listen to them, the way I've said, let me come and listen to the people here. Give them an opportunity to be heard and to know what's going on. Mr. Chairman, there's nothing that stops you. This district is yours. You can allocate your councillors, zones, and they go and talk about the city. What is good about Fort Porto? What gives you a critical advantage over the areas? Why do I, as your minister, support Fort Porto City? Number one, Fort Porto is the true regional headquarter in this area here. For a long time, the Gonzales and the regional meeting and the regional interaction will be in Fort Porto. It's already known. You do not go to the video for a meeting of the Gonzales region. Although it is our district. This is where it began. So it should have the ease of buying from the rest of the region. It should be seen as the center that will spread out the opportunities of development to the rest of the people in this Toro Kingdom. Indeed, the Porto has tourism facilities in its midst and in its vicinity. So coining it as the tourism seat of Uganda is correct. The only thing is to make sure that we develop these facilities to a modern tourism facility. Cultural background of this area provides you a true leadership, culture that is the envy of so many other people. And people will come from different areas to visit and to stay here. Maybe simply to see your king. Maybe simply to enjoy the traditional dance. Maybe simply to, because they like the feeling. <laughs> Maybe because the culture of them at all really is attractive. Maybe they want also a back on him. Maybe because they know that the ladies of Fort Porto are very beautiful in the whole world. That's true. The culture, the people, the tradition of Fort Porto is attractive enough to make it a center of attraction. I'm aware that this municipality already has a fiscal plan. We are not starting from zero. So I know that we are going to include the neighboring areas so that we have a big master fiscal plan for the area. It will be easy for me to support planning here because there is already, already something on ground. I stayed here overnight in a new hotel I had not seen in Yaika. Yaika, if you have not slept there, you don't know that we have a first class hotel in Very beautiful, I'm telling you. The services there, Sheraton's class. The other day we came with other investors. I was here with His Excellency the President on the upgraded workshop. Attracting, and I saw so many investors saying, we are also coming. We shall build a hotel, we are going to build a university. We are going to do this, we are coming as investors. The ground is fertile for Fort Porto to attract investment in this area. <clears throat> Health, service delivery. Fort Porto is already along the way towards city status. It was already a long road. With a highly qualified and educated population serving within the country and abroad. I've gone to various countries and all of a sudden you hear somebody is talking with all. Serving in high international areas, including somebody who has been the Secretary General of the East African Community. 
she is there listening. But am I salute you? The professors who have taught the children of this world. The army officers and commanders of this country. High caliber religious technical business manpower. Now, of Fort Porto City are qualified enough to manage the facility. We give you. We already the see the regional referral hospital here. Today, if we had a problem with Corona, I want to believe that we can manage this facility here. We are able. Now, why I need the city is to make sure that your schools, your health facilities, your water, your roads, your service delivery rises to a higher level of the city. Active civil society. Needless to mention, the Kabarole Research, Research Resource Center, and Resource Center, led by my brother, very excellent facility. A strong media here. Do you yet have a television? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, not the evening. We have radios. So just wait. Give for Koto another two, three years. You will still abroad. You will say, I wish I stayed here in Fort Koto. You are going to see newspapers on the street printed here when you come back. You are going to see journalists coming here to pick the news. And we want to see modern ICT facilities and services in Fort the modern city we are going to develop is not the city of 1960. That's why I've challenged the staff. You know, step up to your competence. Because today we are able to talk and debate with other people who are not here. Today Parliament is able to sit and listen to the president. Step up to your competence. Bring in your expertise from outside. The sector of the business community. We need you. We need to build this city together with you. The environment, we must make sure that this city is eco friendly, that we make sure that we use the environment sustainably. This is of the street vendors attracting MDS to the regional offices here. Some of these will belong to us as government, but the others will belong to the new city council. The new city council must plan, they must set policies, they must guide. Do they want street vendors that are the street? Do they want to attract offices to come here? So, I can see many of the things you've raised. I was noting that some are for us as government, but there are also some which are for the new city. Allow me to correct the way you understood me. Sometimes you say something, if you do not say it properly, somebody can understand it in a different way. There is no way I will say or even me that government transfers depend on the way you collect your local revenue. Because I'm part of the team that works out the formula for transfer of government resources to local governments. We depend on population, we depend on area, we depend on Poverty unions and others. There is nothing to say that for the portal, if you don't collect this revenue here, government will not give you a grant. You know, that was a misunderstanding. But what I said and that, what I emphasize is that the new city must step up its local revenue generation capacity. Because somebody here said, we do not want to be beggars, we want to be a self sustaining city. Self-sustaining means a local revenue. We must look at property rates, we must look at taxi parks and so on. Let me, have, let me inform you and others who may be listening. AJ Missouri at Tax Park, Nabas Park, you said you've lost money. I do understand. But there was a problem. Now associations as managing as a taxi park and a bus park. 
some of the taxi drivers and owners and bus drivers and owners complained about several illegal multiple taxes and fees they were paying. So we have harmonized this. And actually the amount any taxi or bus operator will pay is going to reduce all this by half. We've now agreed and the statutory instrument is already read outside it. We've worked with municipal works and Kampala Capital City Authority. We've now agreed a taxi or a bus operator is not going to pay to an association or to a local authority director. They are going to pay to URA. And URA will amalgamate all the fees collected and distribute it to their local governments along the route of your operation. And the seat of destination, they all have a share. So do the other authorities along the way. This one will be published, we shall give it to you. And the money will be there. And actually we've even taken another step. The Washington Mayor. We now have agreed government at the beginning of the financial year disperses money to the local governments in form of what they would expect to get out of local revenue. Can you imagine? So the question is, well, how much do you expect to get this year? 300 million. And the Minister of Finance, in the first quarter, sends to a town clerk or car the equivalent of a quarterly release from local revenue. Speak for the new city and the new local governments and the sub counties. Mr. Chairman, the new town councils and sub counties are going to secure and adjust within the budget to make sure they are operationalized. But I'm not going to speak for somebody who is stealing money from the public. That one don't, don't come to me. There is no friendship between me and somebody who is an investor.